You've said that China won't move on Taiwan militarily, in part because it's, uh, as you said, amphibious operations are difficult. Why will China not move on Taiwan, is in your sense, uh, in the near future? Well, it's because there's this body of water called the Taiwan Strait, mm -hmm. which is a big body of water. And getting across water uh, is very difficult, unless you can walk on water. So geography <laughs> still has a role to play in the 21st century? Oh, yeah. I think geography is very important. Big bodies of water really matter. Yeah. In an ideal world, you'd like to have the Pacific Ocean between you and any potential adversary, you know, 6,000 miles. Yes. 6,000 miles of water, hard to get across. Yeah. If you're a country and I'm a country and there's land between us, I can take my panzer divisions and I can go right across the land and get into your country or attack your country. And you, of course, can take your panzer divisions and come across that same piece of land. But if there's a big body of water between us, your panzer divisions can't go across the water. And then the question is, how do you get them across the water? And that's very tricky. And in a world where you have lots of submarines and you have lots of aircraft and you have missiles that are land-based that can hit those surface ships, it is very, very hard to, to, you know, to attack across a body of water. And all you have to do is think about uh, Normandy, you know, the American invasion of Normandy, June 6, 1944, mm -hmm. coming in on Omaha Beach, right? Uh, oh boy, that was really difficult. But there is a growing asymmetry of military power there, that even though it's difficult. That is correct. So I, I, I guess- <laughs> That is correct. Uh, so I, I recently had a conversation with, with Elon Musk and, and he says that, uh, you know, China is quite serious about the one China policy. And it seems inevitable that Taiwan will have to be, if you look at this pragmatically in the 21st century, it seems inevitable that Taiwan will have to be a part of China. And so we can get there either diplomatically or militarily. Like, um, what do you think about the inevitability of that kind of idea? When a nation says this is a top priority for us, um, what do you think about them meaning it? And what do we do about that? There's no question it's a top priority for them, and there's no question they mean it. But it's also a top priority for us not to let them take Taiwan. Why exactly? Because it's an important strategic asset. Uh, many people will say it's because Taiwan's a democracy, but that doesn't matter that much. Uh, it's because uh, of two strategic reasons. The first is, that uh, if we were to let Taiwan go, it would have hugely negative consequences for our alliance structure in East Asia. Mm -hmm. To contain China, we need allies. We have an alliance structure. And our allies, Japanese, South Koreans, Filipinos, Australians, they're all counting on us to be there for them. And if we say we're not going to defend Taiwan, the Chinese attack, they're gonna say, I bet if the Chinese attack us, the Americans won't be there for us. Yeah. Uh, so the, it, it would have uh, a, a damaging effect on our alliance structure, which we cannot afford, because containing China is a wicked problem. It's a powerful state. You were getting to this before when you talked about China versus Taiwan. So that's the first reason. Second reason is you wanna bottle up the Chinese Navy and the Chinese Air Force inside the first island chain. You don't want to let them get out uh, into the Pacific. You don't want them dominating the waters of East Asia. You want to bottle them up again inside the first island chain. And you can only do that if you control Taiwan. If you don't control Taiwan, they get out into the Philippine Sea, into the Pacific and uh, the Western Pacific and cause all sorts of problems. Well, you saying all that, you've also said the century of humiliation. Japan and the United States are a source of that humiliation for China. Don't you think they see the other side of that? Absolutely. And <laughs> in the interest of avoiding a world war, 
I guess the question is, uh, how do we avoid a world war? It doesn't um, seem like the military involv involvement in the conflict between China and Taiwan is the way. Well, I, I don't want... There's, there's no good answers here. I'm just saying... There are no good... <laughs> which is the, the less bad option. Well, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you deter uh, China from invading Taiwan. You want to avoid a war. You and I are in complete agreement on that. We don't want a war, but we want to contain China. We do not want to let China dominate Asia. That, that's what the Americans are principally concerned with here, and it's what China's neighbors are principally concerned with. And this includes the Japanese, the South Koreans, the Filipinos, Australians, and the Taiwanese. We, they don't want, and we don't want, China to dominate the region. So we have to contain it. But at the same time, and this should be music to your ears, we not only want to contain it, we want to make sure we don't end up in a shooting match with yeah. the Chinese, because this could be disastrous. So you have to have a very smart policy. You have to build powerful military forces, and you have to make sure you don't do anything that's provocative. On Taiwan, for example, the last thing you want is for the Taiwanese government to declare its independence, mm -hmm. because the Chinese have said, if Taiwan does that, we'll go to war. Mm -hmm. And of course, we don't want that. So my view is you want to smartly build up your military forces, and you want to do everything you can to contain China. Uh, and at the same time, not be provocative. So a big component of that is making uh, sure your military, the U.S. military is bigger than the Chinese military? Not necessarily. Uh, it's an interesting question. Uh, a lot of people think that to make deterrence work, right, you have to be able to beat the Chinese, and therefore you need a much bigger military. Uh, and I don't think over time that's possible, right? I think it's probably not even possible now to beat the Chinese in a war over Taiwan or in a, in a war in the South China Sea. I think what you want to do is make it clear to the Chinese either that there will be no winner. In other words, you don't have to win, but you want to make sure they don't win. Okay, it's 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 a lose lose uh, mm -hmm. proposition if they go to war over Taiwan or what have you. Uh, and if you can't do that, right? You think that they're so powerful that they're ultimately going to win. You want to convince them that victory would be a pyrrhic victory. In other words, they would pay a god awful price to win the war. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> excuse me. The best strategy for deterrence is. You win, mm -hmm. China loses. Second best strategy is a stalemate. Nobody wins. Third best strategy is they win, but they pay a god awful price. And the fourth possibility, which you don't want, is they win quickly and decisively, right? Uh, if that's the case, then you don't have much deterrence. Mm 